you know, I sort of coined a phrase, which is, you know, get the audience at the edge of their seat, and while they're leaning forward, hit them with the truth. I didn't really know what it was, I think, until I was about 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I would hear it, but I, I didn't really fully grasp the magnitude of it. What is Juneteenth? In Galveston, Texas, in 1865, about two and a half years after Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, was the time at which Black people understood that they were also free, um, enslaved Black people. And so they had been, you know, some stories go that they had been held there in order to keep farming the land um, until uh, the harvest season was over. Juneteenth is a really special holiday for African Americans. I grew up in the South and was really aware of it at a young age. It is the celebration of the point at which um, all Black people were free. People refer to it as the second Independence Day, but I see it as the first Independence Day because none of us are free until we all are. Right. So how did you come to do Lincoln's Dilemma? It was the opportunity to impact, you know, to add to the kind of canon of stories about a really um, important and really key president. What you get across this country is a history that is often not robust and complex around the stories of Black people. Black people really pushed the country towards emancipation, that there were so many actions that were done even by enslaved people, exerting as much power as they had in their day-to-day -day lives to really push all of the country to understand and embrace their humanity. And I'm just curious about how um, this history informs the work that you do, and in particular, if you want to talk about Swagger. The opening image of Swagger is a maze, mm -hmm. right? And so I think for many audience members, it might just be like a good visual, but actually in our show, maze becomes a metaphor for life. But really, the maze ties back into like Harlem Renaissance, Reconstruction, Emancipation, and like wanting to feel that in the narrative, you know, I sort of coined a phrase, which is, you know, get the audience at the edge of their seat and while they're leaning forward, hit them with the truth. You know, it's really important for me to tell the stories of uh, black folks in particular, yeah. women, folks from the South, that's all my demographic. And it's because those stories are not uplifted. You know, young black girls, for example, it's a charge that I gladly take on. And at the same time, it just gives us so much more work to do than the average director, right? It's interesting to hear you say that you think of a social cause when you're taking on a project. Like, that's all I do. Yes. It doesn't matter <laughs> what, it doesn't even matter if it's about basketball. Like, that's all I do, yeah. you know? The first thing that really, like, dropped in for me with Swagger is that it was about 14-year-old youth basketball players, mm -hmm. right? What I took hold on right now is the most famous 14-year-old in American history, Emmett Till. There's this amazing picture of Emmett Till by this artist named Lisa Whittington, and half of the, the painting is Emmett looking like the world is his, you know, yes. optimistic, and the other side is like marred and, and scarred and really taking on all of the atrocities of the world. This is a side, you know, the, 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 the positive, the optimistic, the, the side that we all fight for, yes. for our kids, for our communities, this is really what Swagger is about. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think about when I was um, looking at Lincoln's Dilemma and looking mm -hmm. at the story and really writing scenes about enslaved people in a way that I wanted to make sure that they weren't these flat narratives. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were infused with all the humanity that they had, right? It's very interesting that that's my charge in 2021 when I was when I was doing the writing is I still need to um, communicate to other people the humanity of black folks. And so it is still necessary. It's a necessary charge. Did the events of 2020 impact any of your recent work? It took me a moment, but I got recommitted um, to my craft and recommitted to telling these stories. For me, there's a gift um, to black people when I'm telling their stories that I think I'm obligated to give, but the work that was driving me. I imagine that there might be some person watching, definitely some black person who sees themselves differently, sees their history differently by understanding, you know, simple things like when enslaved people were working in the fields, they would uh, sing songs. You know, you think about the songs and, and you often think about songs and entertainment as a little bit of this kind of um, ways that people like to characterize black folks as kind of like shuffling and singing kind of um, stereotype, right? But enslaved people sang songs in the field, work songs, 
to change the tempo of their work. So they actually would sing slower to slow things down. Or if somebody on the end of the line, at the end of the, that row, needed to um, catch up or wasn't well, they would slow them down or they would speed it up. And so those were actual choices in the ways that Black people organized with each other. Like you, after the events in, in 2020, production shut down mm. um, just because of the pandemic. I think during that shutdown, initially, my thought was that when we'd come back, we would continue the season on as is and just kind of stay the course. Mm. You know, just hearing various opinions that people didn't really want to deal with the pandemic on screen or the events of, you know, George Floyd or, or Brianna or any of that on screen. Yes. And then it just it just felt like like it's a missed opportunity. You know, I'm an artist, I'm a black artist, and I have to hold the mirror up to society right now. And so I felt like one of the better decisions I made on the show was that we embraced the fact that we were in a pandemic and we embraced the fact that we were all impacted by these murders and really felt like it elevated everything we were doing. I think that there is um, a kind of leveling out as opposed to exceptionalism um, that's often used to refer to the way that Black folks show up. I think a leveling out and an understanding of what we can all do in the spaces that we're in. And like you said, we're filmmakers. And so this is the space in which we have power. And it's really important to leverage that. Um, and particularly when there's backlash at times, which has certainly been the case. You know, and I think that's great because I think one of the things that can get lost, even in sometimes when this conversation is about Juneteenth, yes. is like, how great it is to be black. Right. Like, how much of our culture is a celebration? Like, how much of our culture has influenced this country? Yeah. How much of, like, black love has sustained us? It sustained us to sustain this country. We wouldn't be a democracy without the work that folks did to really push Lincoln along to the Emancipation Proclamation. There's not another proclamation coming. We have to write that proclamation now, yes. you know? And it doesn't absolve other people of their responsibilities. We just have to keep moving it forward. And we do have to stand on the shoulders of, of ancestors and we have to be the shoulders that other people could stand on.